I'm here checking out some history in the city of Palma de Mallorca in the Cas Castel de Belver, the historic Gothic castle on top of the hill that overlooks the city. And there are a series of, I would imagine, seven or eight rooms that illustrate the city all the way from prehistoric times to Roman times to the Arab times. And this room now covers the period of 1229 when King Jaime of Spain reconquered Mallorca from the Moors to 1575, so medieval Mallorca. Let me show you an image here of what that would have looked like. This would have been medieval Mallorca. Over on this side you can actually see an arrangement of, uh, or a family tree I would imagine, of the kings and queens of Mallorca all the way with Jaime, who is the first one up there, I can't even read it, Pere Onse, Peter the first, and then we have Jaime the first, Rey d'Aragon, he was the king of Aragon, and then it continues all the way down, although it doesn't give me any timelines. Here are some architectural markers of that period, including tiles some uh, earthenware from the medieval times and some shields at the top, coats of arms of different royal families. Now we have Palma from 1575 to 1902 and you can see that uh, pottery has grown a lot more elaborate as you can see. One of the unique features of Palma de Mallorca are its beautiful inner courtyards and most of them are closed off to the public but uh, they're beautiful Renaissance courtyards going from 1400, 1500 to 16, 1700. Beautiful inner courtyards. Occasionally you can catch a peek of some of these courtyards when you're walking through the streets. They're really very, very interesting. They also have plants usually, palms and all sorts of subtropical plants. Here's another few pictures of some of these inner courtyards. There is a guided tour offered. Oh, here's a, an image of the city of Palma de Mallorca at that time. Here are some street numbers and some keys of that time period. Casa 23, 37, Casa 40, 61. These are some historic marble and late uh, street numbers. And this is an image of the fortification walls surrounding Palma. It says here that the principal city court and capital of the kingdom, kingdom of Mallorca is the city of Palma, one of the prettiest and most cheerful and most fertile in Europe. The city is located at the base of an inlet, uh, inlet on the seashore on a long sheltered beach. There you go, surrounded by good modern fortified walls with 14 bulwarks and other constructions and castles, the largest of which is the gate to the docks. Eight gates, three on the side nearest the sea and the other five in the part of the wall that faces inland. The fortification uh, walls were taken down I don't know exactly when, in 1800s or 1900s. Here we're covering more modern Palma, 1902 to 1960. And there's actually a very interesting history about how the city has grown. And um, all these uh, uh, demonstrations on the wall illustrate how the city uh, underwent tremendous growth in the 20th century. There's also a lot of modernist or Art Nouveau architecture. You can see here 1908, 1909, 1907. Very, very popular construction style at that time. It talks about different types of construction. And let me see what this is here. Oh, this is an image of Palma doesn't really give me a description of the photo, but it must have been in the early 20th century here. You can see um, 
I think the this area here is where the former fortification walls were running. They were surrounding the city in a more or less semicircular jagged uh, pattern and they were taken down and they have become big avenues nowadays where a lot of the traffic is is running surrounding the city core. Now Palma 1960 and onwards you can see what has happened here is that tourism has changed the island and has changed the city. Um, mass tourism kicked in in the 1960s. See, now you see an image of modern Palma with the airport and all that. And uh, mass tourism really brought Mallorca on the international map. Uh, let's see here, 50s and 60s mark a period of huge economic growth because of the tourist boom. Um, then it talks about how city planning was affected from there. And uh, Palma is a city whose functions are segregated from the others and concentrated in big areas. Two of those are industrial estates, Son Castello and Can Valero. One is for schools, Son Rapinha. Two are associated with healthcare, Son Dureta and Son Lazer. And two are for tourism, the eastern and western side. So that's pretty interesting actually that Palma has completely segregated its city in terms of the commercial and institutional usages. Uh, Palma has a number of big hypermarkets, an airport, a port and a waste incinerator which are used by the island as a whole. This means that people have to make long journeys from one part of the city to another normally using their own vehicles. Over the last few years the old quarter's resident population has grown once again and its buildings have started to undergo res restoration work. In spite of st this, it still tends to be the center of the city and indeed the island's commercial and political life. Here we see one of those medieval uh, tiny little window slots that were used to point guns and, and rifles out the window. And what do we have here? Oh, now we see a model of the, the modern theater and um, outdoor entertainment area that's right next to the cathedral. And I think this is pretty much the end of the City Museum of Palma, which is located in the Castel de Belver. See here you have various pieces of literature about the city. And now we're back out in the courtyard of this beautiful castle here. The Castel de Belver, completely round, dating back to the early 1300s.